Hello everyone, welcome again another uh, educational session of International Emergency Medicine Education Project. Uh, today's topic is uh, about eldership and we will talk this important aspect of uh, research with Professor Abu Zidan. Uh, Prof, welcome again, thank you very much for uh, helping us to produce this uh, series and uh, it is another important topic that we want to talk with you today. It is about authorship. So what, what is your experience about being author? What is your experience or recommendations to the young researchers about authorship? Uh, thank you, Arif, again for addressing this important topic. And I think it's very important to, for students to understand that from, this, from the beginning. Uh, education is very important in research so people can uh, see what's their expectations, what are they going to achieve from being inside uh, this area. Just to simplify for the students, I, I want you to think of two important examples that are simple and that are very logical. Once we speak about authorship, it means ownership. And I like to give this example usually. If you have a diamond, this diamond is owned by someone. It can be either a real diamond or it can be a false diamond. And also the guy who has this diamond can be the real owner or he can be actually a thief that stole that diamond. So once we speak about authorship, we concentrate on ownership. Now this is irrelevant, I mean, the, the, whether it's a diamond or not, that's research methodology issue. Is it a real study, or it's a fake study, or a fabricated study, or a falsified study? But once we speak about authorship, you should own that uh, piece of diamond to say, this is my diamond. That's as simple as that. It's logic. Now, if you go to the terminology, uh, I like really to, to uh, simply ask a question, who owns this paper? That's what would you come. And do you have the right to be an owner on this paper? It's very similar whether you want to be a, an owner of a company or part of a company. That basic principle is really missing even in many of the research institutions. They think that to be a part of, an, of a, a paper simply because you like you or, they, or take you out because they don't like you, that, that's not really what the scientific committee accepts. Now we have to acknowledge that different communities may differ a little. I mean, I know that the cultures are different. Some institutions, they uh, put everyone in the department in a paper, even if they don't know what's in it. Uh, some institutions in other countries put the chair of department in any paper, whether he knows about it or not. And I think this is misconception. Why? Because you have to define ownership. The International journals, editors internationally, has agreed on simple basic criteria which are logical. These what are, are those, bro? Yeah. The ownership is the mental ownership, not the technical ownership. What does that mean? You have To be an author, there are three criteria that you should fulfill all to be an, to be an author. And these are that you should participate in the idea or data analysis, because now you have to start mental input to solve an issue, which is difficult. Then the whole technical part is not part of it. R drafting the paper mentally also. And finally, critically reading the final version and approving it, which means you are accountable to it. Because you say that I've read it and I approve it. And now most of the journals insist on this statement. All authors read the final version of the paper and approved it, if you notice. Now, the fourth pillar, which I, I really was very happy about it, which came a few, few years ago, is that accountability. If you accept to be an author, so you should be accountable to what is rare. If you really uh, want to say, oh, this is a real diamond and you sell it for others, and then you find that this is a false diamond, you are actually uh, participated in selling a false diamond. So now the details, there are a lot of details. Now, if this concept is not there, I mean, people get in a lot of, uh, of really, um, we, I call it non-ethical publication 
methods. For example, if you want to sell a car, you can sell it only to one person. So some people who are under pressure to be promoted, what they do, because they know the time is very short, they submit the paper for two journals at the same time. That means they are selling their car to P people and hoping that one will be rejected and the other will be accepted. And before the, the screening now, we have a lot of good journals that can really pick those in the early stage. And I have to acknowledge that even in the last uh, two, three years, there is now uh, a trend to, to put papers unpublished on the website that can yeah. be screened. And that protects against what we call it uh, dual publication. So that's one example, is trying to publish the same paper. Yeah, this is dual publication or dual, you know, submission. Uh, the, how do you, you know, relate or connect this one with the other shit? Yeah, because you, you pretend you are the on, you are owner of the same paper and you're selling it for two journals. And uh, actually you have gone into an agreement with the journal that the paper will be published only in this journal because they have to review it. So you have to respect what you sign on, which is an agreement. Now, the other thing which I found strange, which people do not uh, really uh, difficult to pick, is called salami publication. And salami publication is a very tricky thing. For example, I'll tell you one example. If you have 12 variables predicting mortality in a specific population with the same time, the same patients, people, what they do, they take either each variable and see the effect on mortality, or sometimes report, let's say, 12 variables, half of them, they report them in one paper and half in the other. And that's called, uh, uh, that's salami publication. Why? Because your outcome and your population is the same. And the methods is the same. So factors affecting mortality includes all factors. And they just want to increase the number of publications to pretend, oh, I have 20 publications, 50 publications. The number of publications is not an indication of high quality science. Just to tell you this, uh, the DNA discovery took 20 years for the writer to write two pages and he got Nobel Prize for it. So the, the young people, they just like to put pay, uh, numbers of papers without really participating on them. And uh, I, I think it's important yeah. to feel proud of what's your name on. If you haven't done it, don't do it. Don't put your name and pretend you are an author. Uh, the, the, what, what do you think about the honorary authorship? Do you think you know, it is common issue? Yeah, it is common, yes, um, unfortunately, in every place. And especially, I think that you have to understand very important uh, point, Arif. Uh, this is very sensitive. Being a chair does not give you, according to the agreements of international journals, I'm not speaking about different cultures, different, uh, but. Uh, the, what we practice, what we accepted to practice, is that if you are a chair, this gives you doesn't give you the right, doesn't give you the right to be on every paper stemming from, from your department. You have to have mental input. You have to be involved in the process from scratch. The the second te technical work is not an indication to be an author. So what do you mean about the technical work? Do you mean the collecting the data or entering yeah, yeah. the data, yeah, yeah. the data, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. So how can you overcome that? I mean, if you tell the young people collected that is not a criteria for authorship, then you, some people say, no, no, I'm not going to, to, to. How can you overcome that? Include them in the criteria of authorship. Don't use them as technicians. Involve them with the discussion from the scratch, refining the question. Let them be involved in the drafting. Let them be critically reading the paper. So not everyone who's collecting data should not be an author. But collecting data alone or technical work alone does not give you the criteria to be an author. You have, we have to be clear. And so to encourage people, you have to be inclusive. You define who will be with you in a manuscript from the scratch. And it's very important, I like to stress that, and you've seen that with me many times. The first meeting, we make the whole plan. We decide the responsibilities, and we even put the sequence of authors depending on input. And I'll give you, I mean, this beautiful uh, structure you put like a camera and a production and interview. What we do at the end now in many journals is called contribution of authors. The contribution of authors really reflects what you contribute. It's like the film. You see a producer a, 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 and uh, someone who is uh, the, the fun, financial supporter, one the photographer. So it's exactly like producing a film. You can at the end write what did everyone do 
So you are fair even if you cannot catch it on the on the on the on the on the uh, sequence of authors. Uh, at least you don't say I am a co-author because I'm the chair, or I'm the co-author because I collected a few samples, or I'm the co-author because I donated money. People who give for say, oh, I'll give you my funds, and then you you. Put, that's not actually an accepted uh, authorship criteria for high levels. Uh, Prof, thank you so much. It was very clear messages to our young researchers and uh, hope to see you in our next episodes. Thank you very much, Arif. I enjoyed this session as much as you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Prof.